Hello, and welcome to the first of four sessions of hashtag iHunt, or I'm just going to call it iHunt because I'm not going to say hashtag every time. Uh, that seems like a little much. Uh, this is a relatively new uh, fate-based standalone game of monster hunting in the gig economy. It is about desperate people uh, trying to make some money, and right now, uh, monster hunting is the thing that that has has the most appeal, um, and that that in itself should say something uh, about the world that we're in. And we'll we'll talk about what the framework is to that in uh, a bit. Uh, I hunt is originally a set of of novels, uh, and they took the material from that and they made this book. It's in PDF form right now, uh, and. I will honestly tell you when, as soon as they have a hard cover or soft cover edition, I will be buying it immediately. I think it's one of the best, most evocative fate settings. I've read a lot of fate. Uh, and I think it's, it's really, uh, really amazing. Um, who am I though, to say such a thing? Well, my name is Lowell, uh, pronouns are he, him. Uh, I'm the Gauntlet Gaming Community Manager. Uh, this video is part of the Gauntlet Hangouts. The Gauntlet Hangouts, uh, is an online gaming club community uh, that has a, an online app that supports our calendar. Uh, we have podcasts that are associated with it. We have a Patreon that supports all of that. We do a lot of online gaming uh, and we record a lot of these videos. So that is what this is about. Uh, if you're interested in that, uh, gauntlet-rpg.com. Check it out there. You can find out more details about that. So what's gonna happen here at the start of this session is I'm gonna go through uh, what we call, what is called CATS, uh, concept, approach, tone, and safety, discuss what that means. I'm gonna talk a little bit about fate as a system, how I run it and the changes that are going on in this particular version. Uh, and then we're going to roll into a character creation, which is gonna be some picks about aspects and things. And then uh, uh, is going to have a little kind of diceless play through we'll, and uh, we'll, we'll to, to set up some of our, our aspects there. Uh, so first of all, concept. So what we have is a group of young people on the margins. Uh, we're in a city called, they call uh, San, San Gennaro. I think I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it's a California city that has been gentrified, has uh, a, a lot of stark uh, socioeconomic and class differences from neighborhood to neighborhood. Um, it is a place where the cost of living is super high, uh, where there are more empty homes uh, than there are homeless people uh, uh, here, uh, as, as happens in many major metropolitan areas in the U.S. today. Uh, and our characters are young people uh, trying to survive in this economy. Uh, they work uh, uh, jobs that, that are, are just, just the poverty line uh, or jobs that are you know, multi-step uh, uh, to get through, jobs that are regulated or unregulated. Uh, and the iHunt app, the job of hunting monsters is appealing because you can go and do a job and get like $3,000. And that can cover your rent for a while. That can cover your meds for a while. That can uh, cover paying for your auto insurance, your health, you know, at least uh, uh, some of that for a while. It's a dangerous, risky thing, uh, but the rewards are good. Uh, it's about trying to stay afloat. Mind you, it's a gig app. So you are still commodities, you are still workers, uh, uh, unlicensed workers, uh, unsupervised workers, workers without rights. Uh, and there are a lot of things about the iHunt app that are uh, exploitative. Uh, for example, uh, when people come on there, they can rate you down and uh, uh, iHunt will give them a discount if they rate you low uh, and uh, they take that uh, discount out of your pay. Uh, and there are lots of things like that. The book talks about uh, how how the, the the whole thing works together. And of course, you can't really hunt monsters off the books because they'll find out and then you'll get cut out of the app. Uh, 
and you'll never be able to, to do this. So uh, the monsters are both monsters uh, and capitalism uh, are the two things that, that uh, are, are uh, a problem here. Now, the, one of the premises of this world is that uh, there are monsters out there and kind of people kind of laugh when, when they've seen the I hunt map and, and app and they've, yeah, yeah, there's monster hunters, what, what a joke. Um, but there are monsters out there uh, and, and they do do these things and people do go on the app um, just because of top of mind awareness when they, they have one of these things. It's a weird kind of mundane background it's not like people talk about it on the television. It's just a thing that is there. That is a kind of a layered uh, thing at the back. And these are not sophisticated lords of the night. Uh, these are awful, you know, just unpleasant monsters uh, uh, that uh, uh, prey on people at the margins. Uh, now, that's not to say that some of them might not have a human side. Some of them might not be redeemable. Um, uh, uh, and, and that might be a question that comes up, but it won't come at the start. The, the, the first monster or two that we fight, we will know that they are monsters and we will we'll make that black and white before we go to any of the questionable things just to, to set that stage. So that's a concept, that's the overall concept. Our approach is that uh, there's uh, a, a job that's put up, uh, the, the group looks at it, they look at what is involved with it, probably put a couple of jobs on the table uh, to, to choose from. Uh, you do the legwork. Uh, you figure out how much it's going to cost you to actually do the job, uh, what it's going to take in terms of time off from other work, or how many people you're going to have to pay to get access, that kind of thing. Uh, then you'll do the job, uh, and uh, then we'll figure out after that is the, the dealing with all the shit in your life. Uh, that is the, the other part of the play, uh, figuring out about that. Um, the tone here, I would say, is uh, desperate, angry, funny, and wicked. Uh, it seems to me to be the tone just from the book. Um, uh, it, it definitely, the author's voice comes through uh, in the text. I am a white, uh, a lower middle class Midwesterner. So I am uh, uh, not, not necessarily the, 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 the right person to be doing this. Uh, but I'm going to try and treat the material with respect uh, and uh, uh, try and do the tone without uh, bordering into parody for any of this kind of stuff. Because it's pretty, some pretty serious issues that we're exploring through a kind of a lens of dark comedy here. Uh, with that in mind, uh, we have uh, some safety tools that we're going to be using for play. Uh, the book actually has uh, a very rich set of systems that it uses for safety with actually a quiz for each player character and things like that. I'm adapting that a little, so we're not using exactly as the, the safety mechanics are presented in the book, uh, but we are using what they call levels, which is what I would also call lines and veils uh, in, in a way. We have a tab for that in the character keeper. Uh, it has a, a set of issues, uh, 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 topics, and then there are some check boxes next to them. Uh, anything that's a hard line is this, we don't wanna see it at this table. This is, we're, we're, this is not stuff we're gonna deal with. We're not gonna uh, uh, allude to it. We're just, that's, that's not stuff we're doing. Um, uh, like torture uh, or, or sexual assault or violence to children. People might say that's a hard line on that. Uh, if, if you wanna mark something as off screen okay, it means that it might happen. Like, let's say that you marked gore as off screen. Okay. If you come into a murder scene, we might just say, okay, you know, it is a murder scene. It, it looks terrible, but we don't go into it any further than that. Um, on screen. Okay. Means that you're okay with it being mentioned, but we're going to kind of fade away. We're going to kind of fade to black. We're not going to deal with it too much. Uh, you know, we might uh, see that, the, the classic one we say is any sexual content, we do the, the Buffy fade to black as the characters embrace. Um, so those are all check boxes. Go ahead and, and check those throughout the character creation process for things that you feel you wanna, wanna make a statement on. The other thing that, that they have is uh, a column that is not me, meaning that even if 
if you're like, I'm fine with this. Like, I'm fine with there being romance at the table, but I don't want my character to be involved with romance. That's not for me. I'm, care- I'm cool with it being there, but it's not for me. It's an interesting thing. It's a, that's a thing I haven't tried uh, at the table before. That's a thing that they have in the safety tool. So I'm putting that in there as an option uh, on the safety tool list. So we, before we get to actual play, we'll come back and we'll look at all of these and I'll, I'll go through what all of, uh, of our lines and things are for this. To complement that, uh, I know you're all familiar with the X card. Uh, this is the other tool that we have as backup. Uh, while this is kind of a, uh, a setup tool, the, the, the levels, uh, our active tool in play is the X card. Uh, the X card is used if we hit material that we find uh, objectionable, uh, that we find problematic, uh, uh, particular kinds of language that we, we ob- object to, uh, or if we find that something that is happening is wildly off tone, uh, that, that doesn't fit with the tone that we've established, uh, both in terms of the in game or in terms of the kind of play style tone that we, we've established with between one another. Uh, we can X card that either through saying X card or doing that gesture uh, or, or saying something in the chat uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of retcon and go forward. Uh, no questions asked except for maybe where do we need to cut? That's the only kind of thing that we have for that. The last tool that we have, uh, and I just mentioned this, uh, this is really more for games that are more emotionally heavy, but I want to make sure that, that everybody knows this is still an option. Uh, open door means that if if you need to step away from the table for whatever reason, you can do so. Just you know, turn your camera off, maybe put a message in the chat. You don't have to put a message, um, but you, you have the right to do that at any time uh, uh, if anything happens uh, or whatnot. So those that's all on the, the table for you. Um, all right. So uh, that's all my, it's my setup stuff. I want to talk about fate and I want to talk about how I run fate. Uh, you've all said that you've played fate at, uh, at least, you know, uh, once or twice before. Um, the mechanical difference with this game with I hunt to regular fate is that there is uh, a thing called the edge die. And the edge die is that at, in a, any particular sequence, uh, uh, either the, the heroes or the opposition start with the edge, which means that they can roll uh, with an extra D6. They drop one of the usual fate dice and they replace it with a D6. And you can imagine how potent that is. It is really powerful. Uh, if one side has the edge, uh, then the other side can act to take actions to get the edge away from them to get it back onto their side. Um, when a side has the edge, they can use that edge with an action. The first time is essentially free. And then you can, uh, if you have the edge and you want to use it more, you can spend fate points to get you get the use of the, the extra die there. That's the only really big mechanical change besides the way that skills are organized. They have a different set of skills than the usual fate core or, or uh, any of the fate variations there. Um, so now, how I run fate. Number one, uh, I kind of keep things moving. I will tell you that uh, I, I will sometimes go to the compel. I mean, the compel meaning we hit one of your aspects and I say, oh, I think this is probably ha- hindering you and I'll offer you a fate point. Uh, you know, you can take that or you can decline it and pay me a fate point. Uh, I, I leave a lot of that compelling in the player's hands. Uh, to, to say, oh, I think you, this might hit my aspect here or things like that. Um, I don't push on the compels, the compel economy uh, nearly as much as some other people that I've, I've, I've played with um, because I like to keep things moving. Um, but uh, uh, if, if you see a situation that you think it would be excellent and I've missed it, feel free to say. And again, you can, you can mention it to other players at the table. Um, number two, uh, we're going to have aspects on the table. People are going to create advantages. They're going to create aspects. They're going to be situational aspects on the table, things that you can draw on to get those invokes to give yourself bonuses. Again, the re-roll uh, or the plus two or the, the two things that, that, that those points can be used for. Um, I do less of that 
than other GMs. Uh, I would, the table is not filled with index cards. Uh, uh, I tend to focus uh, on uh, usually taking the challenge level, the difficulty levels down a little so we don't have to have, you know, you know, bring eight or 10 aspects on to be able to do something. Um, that's, a, that's a very conscious thing on my part about how I, I scale those things. Aspects are important, they're vital, um, but they're not the end all and be all of how we're playing. Uh, they are, they are an, an add-on. Uh, the third thing I'll mention is that the way I handle information gathering, uh, uh, we typically uh, use an overcome or even a create advantage action. That's effectively what we would call a study action. Essentially, uh, you're creating invokes and you're using those invokes to get questions. So essentially, it becomes a little bit like PBTA in the approach that I, I do for that. So just know that that's how I do information gathering when we go to, to mystery sections. All right, I have talked a lot uh, about this. Uh, what I would like everybody to do is to uh, pop over to the, the, the character tab in the keeper uh, and everybody should claim one of the, the four uh, sectors that we have there. And the process is going to be uh, pretty basic. I want to talk about what's involved with the character and then what we're going to choose right now before we kind of get to play. Um, you're going to have uh, a set of aspects that you're going to come up with. Uh, we're going to leave a couple open. Uh, and uh, those are your high concept, which is your basic premise. You're going to figure that out. Your drama, which is the thing that causes your character problems, uh, causes your character repeated problems. Uh, the vision board is the non-essential thing that your character struggles to achieve. And then your day job uh, is essentially the real job your character works with. Uh, you're going to decide those four for your character. And you write them in a kind of a loose version because we may, we may rework them, we may re-script re them. Um, and then we're gonna come up with the other aspects in our kind of uh, uh, what would be a trio phase in another version of fate, just kind of a talking through thing. Um, while we do that process, at that point, you'll be able to assign your skills. You can see that we've got these uh, skill boxes that are highlighted in red on the character sheet. So we've got one at the plus four level, the great. We've got two at the good, three at the fair, and four at the average. Uh, as we go along, you'll be able to assign the skills. The skill list is on the skills and stunts tab. Uh, you're also going to begin with two stunts of your choice from, from the, the, the things there. Um, you can decide as we go along. You can decide later. I don't, I don't care either way. You will also choose uh, a kink. And what a kink is in this game is there are four ways that people go about being hunters. Uh, and they've got particular terms. Uh, the Evelinas is what they call people who use knowledge and lore to fight monsters. Uh, the knights are the people who use martial skill and force. Uh, the fooies are the people that exploit systems and technology. And then the 66 are the people who fight monsters by mobilizing other people. Um, and depending on which of those you choose, you're gonna get a third free stunt at the start. So look at that, you get three free stunts at the start. And then you're gonna have the option to get more stunts. Uh, so this is pretty cool. That looks like a pretty good thing. Um, so uh, what what we want to do then is uh, we're, I'm going to kind of leave you to think about your your high concept drama vision board and day job. Uh, I I want to see uh, if anyone has a general idea like like a kind of character that they're thinking about within the context of of this. Um, uh, Kyle, have you been thinking about maybe what kind of character you might want to be doing? Uh, yeah, I was, I was thinking about playing an Evelina, 
or maybe a uh, Fui. Okay. I mean, I, I assume, can we have more than one uh, player with this or character with the same kink? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. This, th those are kind of uh, very broad frames. Uh, and uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll kind of narrow in on what you think your, your character might be. Uh, Jason, what are, what are you thinking? If we have to point to one of these uh, four, four alignments, as it were. I had ideas for an Evelina, well, Arcanist or Alchemist, depending, or a um, Night Hitter. Ooh, nice. Excellent. Uh, Jamie, what about you? Yeah, I was looking at, uh, I kind of have a concept already. I was thinking of looking at Knights or the 66. So, um, yeah, basically, what's that video game? What's that video game? No More, no more Heroes? No More Heroes? Yeah, I'm thinking like sort of inspired by that, but less, less out there. Less out there. Well, it's not hard to be less out there than that game. That's true. Um, okay, so. a lot, a lot less. <laughs> okay. Um, Sherry, what are you thinking? Here's my thing. I know what I'm bad at, so it would be not the 66th, um, but I'm good at everything else, if that makes any sense. Well, let me do this. I'm going to let you, I'm going to give you five minutes. I'm going to shut my mouth. Okay, I've been talking for a while. Uh, I want you to take a, a sec, uh, uh, come up with a name, and maybe, maybe figure out one of your aspects. Uh, let me give you five minutes and then let me come back around and, and check in and maybe you can kind of tell us generally what you're imagining for your character and then we can let you roll onto the rest of your aspects. Does that sound cool? No, we're gonna, gonna be quiet now. Is this the same? Oh, sorry, my partner reacted to Riverdale at the same time. Uh, is this the same thing where aspects are a dramatic, interesting sentence? Is that yeah, still a thing? Yeah, uh, a quick phrase or a, a sentence is a good way to do it. We can we can uh, uh, shape those as we need to. Yeah, I found the picture first too, Sherry. That's uh, so all of it is coming from the picture. <laughs>
So I'm going to give you everybody a, a chance to do some more, but I want to, I want to get everybody to give me the, the elevator pitch on their character before I kind of let you keep going. So everybody knows sort of what's going on. Uh, Jamie, I see that you've, you've got a picture uh, and you've got a number of your aspects in there. So give us the, 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 the quick pitch on what you're matching your character is going to be like. Right. So, uh, Takahiro is half Japanese, half Filipino. Uh, his Japanese side is fairly rich, but uh, things didn't work out between their mom and dad. Uh, and so now he and his mom are trying to make it work in, uh, in this horrible gig economy. And uh, the thing is about Takahiro is he doesn't trust anyone except his baseball bat. So um, I'm coming up with a name for the baseball bat. Uh, if he could marry the baseball bat, he would. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. That gives a, a, a good sense. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I, sent, I have a sense that the baseball bat is their primary uh, uh, mode of operation then. Okay. Like he always uh, has the bat with him, even okay. in the bath, in the shower. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, so that gives us that on the table. We'll come back and have you run through all your aspects when I, uh, uh, in a little bit once we get everybody some more, more time. Kyle, what is the, the elevator pitch for your, your character? Um, I'm playing uh, Jamie Woods and Evelina. Uh, so I'm thinking that she's like, okay, she, she's got to do the, the monster hunting for like, you know, the money, but she's like, thinks monsters are like fascinating trying to like learn more about them uh like figure out like magic stuff because she thinks it's cool okay so could could easily get drawn over to the to, to the wrong side of the the tracks as it were okay uh, uh that is that is good that gives a, a good sense uh jason what what are you uh imagining what's the quick pitch on on your character Plaster. Plaster. Okay. Probably not the name his parents gave him. All right. Um, is the front man of an extremely shitty punk rock band. Um, he's uh, the 66th. Um, you can probably guess that he's going to be going for the agitator sub kink or whatever that is. Okay. Um, I'm, uh, I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to phrase a high concept and vision board but um i guess you could say he is the kind of guy who still expects the crowd to catch him crowd surfing even after he spits beer on them all right i like i like that that gives it a good sense and sherry uh what is your quick elevator pitch okay so my girl is uh cass indy kowalski uh, she's a fully her big thing is she's got a car um she's got a pretty good car that she takes really good care of and keeps all of her stuff in it because she lives in it and um but she's got it pretty decked out and her big thing is finding parking um it, and her day job is actually independent valet so that is the thing is like in the sort of parts of the city where it's hard to find parking she goes and, uh, you know, essentially has a thing of will park and people trust her with their money and she goes and puts their car back and then wait, you know, essentially they have to be back before she leaves the area, but she'll go and get it. So uh, I assume you're also doing Uber and Lyft. Uh, yep. Anything okay. I can. All but, right. All but right. parking is her, you know, she's got like an eye. If, if they had a thing for capability to find parking, okay, she would have that. Um, so I that you can uses... you can custom make a stunt for that. Oh, I should. Okay, yeah, yeah I can always find parking, um, right. just not overnight parking. But yeah, right. and then um, I'm, I'll get all the other words. I just okay. knew okay. we had to do something with uh, parking. So, all right. what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you everybody about ten more minutes, or, or less, if I see everybody's got things filled in, uh, to kind of come up with at least a rough version, and then I'll come around and have you talk about what those what those are. Uh, and then we'll, we'll roll forward. Uh, if you get done before the 10 minutes, feel free to look at the skills and stunts list. Uh, on the skills and stunts tab, I have the, 
the skills listed and then what the stunts are next to them at the top. And then actually down below that, I've got what each skill is. I've, I've put in the explanations of them. Uh, some of them are pretty clear, some of them are, are less clear. Uh, so I'm gonna, gonna let everybody roll for another 10 while I, while I shush again.
Okay, Jamie, I'm going to make you walk through your, your aspects here with me. High concept. We, we know your baseball bat is your boyfriend. Um, does that, uh, so, so love the baseball bat, focused in on that. Does that also tell us that that maybe has some awkwardness with other kind of social interactions? Oh, yeah, because uh, his other aspect is his day job is a boyfriend for hire, and that's the only time he's socially, like, good at anything. So the rest of the time, he's quite awkward. Uh, he tries to pull off being cool, but it never really quite works. And what, what does this baseball look bat look like? Uh, it's a aluminum bat. It's been through a lot. There are a lot of dents. It's not quite straight anymore. There are a lot mm -hmm. of stickers on it. Uh, he's gotten a few people to autograph it. And and how did has he always had this? What what's the significance of the the bat uh, to uh, Takahiro? It was the last thing his dad gave him. Oof. <laughs> and how, how what when did his dad walk out or vanish or uh, whatnot we'll come back yeah, to that question I, in a second yeah definitely uh I, I i definitely feel like um it happened when takahiro was young like when he was about eight or ten okay um uh and uh, your drama is your family was a big deal once what what is what is that uh, my dad comes from a long line of businessmen in Japan, but I suspect, you know, uh, it's not a legitimate business. Okay. But, uh, but he owned quite a lot. We used to have a lot of privilege. Uh, I remember being rich when I was young. Uh, but, and, and it's still a struggle because there, there are people who want to get to my dad and what he has. And sometimes they think they can use me. Is it also trouble because you 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 remember being rich and would like to be rich again? Is it is that there's something of that in there? Yeah, and I think it's uh, I've I've inflated it in my head what it was like because the last I was still a kid, so mm -hmm. uh, I thought I had like a swim pool made out of chocolate and shit like that, but it's not true. <laughs> uh, uh, do do you do you throw your weight around with that? Is that something other people know about you? Is that you used to be wealthy, or or your family used to be something big? Ooh, yeah, you know, I think um, I do think I come off as I'm 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 better and deserve more than everybody else, even if I don't mean to. Okay. Okay. Um, your vision board is tracking down your dad. What, what's, what happened there? What's, what's the deal? Yeah. Um, so I heard there, there are like conflicting rumors that my dad is in hiding, that he's dead, that he's just, uh, I don't have access to any real information. So I'm trying to track him down mostly just to get answers like i tell myself right. i want to beat him up but i just want answers okay okay uh and tell me about this boyfriend for higher day job what what does that look like well sometimes people get really lonely and they don't want to bother going through dates or figuring out people so they can hire me uh i have a very competitive rate per hour uh, where I show up and I immediately act like your boyfriend. So there's no, there's no awkwardness. There's no trying to figure each other out. I will just be, I will be whatever boyfriend uh, you need me to be for anybody. Why is this not a great job? Uh, it's not a great job because people think they want a boyfriend, but they want something else. Like they okay. want inner peace or they want... Uh, they want calm or it's a lot of emotional labor also like uh, it's built into it I imagine people also would would assume that that Takahiro is a uh, is a sex worker that you would get a lot of that too uh, even though most of the time it's not even about sex it's me okay. just sitting with them or, or going to a wedding uh, so that relatives don't ask questions like that's what that's most of my work going to weddings what does your mom think of your job? Does she know my about it? My mom doesn't know about my job. Okay. No, no. My mom thinks, uh, I have told my mom that I work online and I am a social marketer. Okay, okay. 
if you had to choose a revelation, would you rather tell her that you're a boyfriend for a hire or that you hunt monsters? I would rather tell her I hunt monsters. Yeah. Okay, that's 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 what I was wondering. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, so we'll, we'll once we get through everybody, we'll come back and we'll kind of kind of start into our scene to to play through that. Um, we may take a break before that, but we'll we'll get to that. Um, Kyle, uh, tell tell me. Uh, uh, we know a little bit about Jamie Woods from your pitch. Uh, tell me what the high the high concept is you've got right now for for her. Uh, right now, I've got big fan of big magic is the high concept. Uh, is that 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 she wants to cast big magic, or she's uh, a fan of just the idea of the supernatural? How do you imagine that? Uh, all all of the above, really. Okay. Like like she's one of the ones like, man, if these monsters weren't killing people, they would be awesome, sort of thing. Like just. So, so uh, a, a real strong interest, but also probably people who work with you uh, as a monster hunter, probably a little bit, maybe, uh, oh boy, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, tell me about what you're imagining for your, your drama. What, what gets you in trouble? Um, I, I initially had something to be like, you know, she, she is too into like, spooky magic stuff but i figured that overlapped with the high concept a bunch so i don't know I, right now i've just got hopeless wind romantic just the 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 she's not good at like interpersonal like like love life is disasters not good at the interpersonal like relationship thingy do, is it do you think it's that that does she does she fall in love easily does she to uh, or is it uh is it more her uh, uh, general inability to kind of figure out signals or to or to pick well for for boyfriends or girlfriends. Uh, I guess I'm just uh, like incapable of telling if people actually like her. So okay. just like a lot of like hopeless pining and stuff. Okay, uh, uh, so yeah, get, gets ideas in, in her head about how things ought to be that kind of messes up. Uh, do, do, does she date? Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 and uh, is she in a, a relationship right now, or is she coming off of a relationship? Uh, whichever would be more fun. I don't. You tell uh, me. You tell me. Uh, sure. Yeah, she's. Or now, let's say she's coming off a relationship. Whoa. What? What? What went wrong with that one? Uh, probably the like like uh, girlfriend didn't like all the hours. Okay. Because I uh, mean, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, put up with the magic stuff, but didn't like the hours. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, 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 you're still thinking about your vision board. Do you have a sense of maybe kind of what you'd want for that? Um, it's feel free to say uh, I'm still thinking about it. If you're still thinking about it, I'm still thinking about it. Okay. Uh, tell me about your your day job. Um. For the concept, I'm currently calling it professionally pleasing barista. Just okay. yeah, she's a barista at a coffee place, and you know has the like professional like happy to see you thing, you know. Uh, and that's a that's a, a wonderful crossroads uh, with the the hopeless romantic thing, of course, because you're, you're baristas, so you're getting hit on uh, all the time. Uh, uh, that is just a, a fact of that. Um, uh, is it is it an industrial? Uh, a coffee shop like a, a Starbucks? Is it like a little regional chain of shops or is it a truly indie hole in the ground coffee shop? Oh, I was thinking some major corporate chain. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so we're like a Starbucks or, or a caribou or big. big. Yeah. Yeah. That's the worst. Um, yeah. So it could be, it could be that. Industry. Okay. Um, uh, excellent. I think that gives us a, a, a pretty good uh, sense of your aspects there. Uh, Jason, let me come and talk to you about your punk rocker. Tell me uh, about Plaster. First of all, let me ask you this. Yeah. You said that Plaster is not his name. How did he get the name Plaster? I got on a stage and told people, hey, I'm Plaster. <laughs> <laughs> Had he thought about that for a while uh, or did it just come to him when he stepped up on stage? I mean, I don't think that they were done fixing the holes from the last show. So there okay. was a bucket of joint compound 
backstage and he's like that'll do do. fine fine excellent um what's your high concept that would be your loudest bloodiest pal so so he is the one who who gets in the mosh pit uh he is the the one who's going to step up maybe even when people didn't want them to step up uh uh, and get in involved in things yeah he's extremely friendly or at least he seems to think he is and um has figured that he gravitates toward professions where he can be noisy and violent um and keep strange hours uh do you think he has any sense that 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 his his loudness or or things might be off-putting to his friends or does 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 is is that just not register he imagines it's off-putting to some people but i mean if if it they wouldn't be his friends if uh, if it was off put into them, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, uh, and uh, uh, your drama aspect? He leaps before looking. Uh, would uh, whether we're talking about the aforementioned crowd surfing or more metaphorically, like there's a monster, go kill it. In his life choices, what what's a, a life choice he's made? Uh, you know that like in, in recently that was very much a I, I did it without even thinking about it kind of thing um a spat on the manager of his last job okay on his way out the door all right um, um and and what kind of job was that um he, he he would purport to not even remember some shitty store or something okay uh so he's he's done done some some day day jobs uh, mm-hmm. uh there uh and uh, is he from San Gennaro? Does he have family here in San Gennaro? Uh, is he kind of drifted in? What do you imagine? He actually um, considers the local runaways and street population his family now. Okay, He doesn't really talk too much about wherever he was before. Um, but yeah. Which... So to definitely have a sense that he's lived, lived on, this, on the streets. He's, he's been in that, in that situation. Yeah, his vision board is make it safe to sleep outside, which he'll try and play off as like, I'm so drunk. But no, actually, like he's actually genuinely concerned about like the local homeless population and runaways and such. Um, Like he like these are the people who are most likely to get picked off by monsters. So, yeah, so he'll he'll look for jobs that that uh, deal with that kind of thing that might suggest that they're preying on that population. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. This city, this city, this shitty rock, uh, punk rock band that you're in, uh, 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 is this one that has stayed together? Uh, is this one that has a variable membership? Is it is it just one in a chain of bands that you've been in? Um, the well, that's a really good question that I probably should have thought more about. Um, let's say that um, one in a chain of bands, but okay. this one has actually pay, played three shows with the same name so he's now telling people that's his job and what is that same name trench mouth on the plastic unicycle trench mouth. sorry dad just this- stole your band name uh- <laughs> <laughs> and uh how, how many people are in the band uh he considers himself a vocalist um I I guess he hits a guitar or something. Uh There's a drummer and there's um, a person he keeps referring to as a bassist who keeps saying like, I play the guitar, dude. (laughs) And do you think that uh, that the the punk scene is alive and well in San Gennaro or is punk kind of very much uh, 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 a marginal uh, music there? That's a also a very interesting question. I would say that there are, um, we said this is a pretty gentrified town, right? Yeah. So I would say that at any given show, it's a mix of people that he, he gets on with well and people that um, I think he he's, hmm, how do I phrase this? He would not sneer at the people coming in dressed and stuff they bought at Hot Topic. Does that store still exist? <laughs> store still, yeah. um, he wouldn't sneer at them, um, but he would recognize them as not exactly my people, but they have promise. 
Okay. All right. Interesting. Uh, so there, there is a scene that, that it is kind of growing. Um, does that scene have a problem with uh, Nazis or have they dealt with that? Um, Any time that it rears its head, he's the first in line to say who needs to get punched. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, so, so they, they probably moved over to the metal scene. Um, there. Okay. Uh, all right. That gives me a, a good sense of things. Sherry, uh, tell us about Cass Kowalski. Sure. Um, so she moved to the city to go to school. She had um, a scholarship and she thought that was enough. She didn't have any sense of how expensive it was. She kind of um, cut her ties with her family because she really hated her stepdad. So she moved out and she was like, never coming back. And she left with her car that she had bought for herself um, while she was still in high school working, you know, working jobs. And it's not a great one, but she fixed it up. And she had friends back there that like work, work with her to do that and all that stuff. And she loves that car. Um, and she moved out here and it just took a semester for her to end up homeless. Um, she just couldn't afford anything and it kept coming at her from all sides. It's why I took the drama so much, so many parking tickets. It's not really about the parking tickets so much as it is just all the little charges and costs and penalties you pay because you don't have a place and you don't have um, extra in the bank um, and all of those things. And it's just kind of this constant overwhelming drain on your ability to um, keep things stable and safe. It seems like it ought to be cheaper. And yet there are, there are so many hidden costs in it that is yeah. uh, dragging to you down. To get an apartment, you have to have enough for three months, first month, last month, you know, and some other month or the, you know, deposit or whatever they call it. Also, you have no references. You've been and, um, here... You know, no, no, we have no one to vouch for you now at this point for previous uh, landlords. That's going to be a huge gap if you try and uh, get an apartment. Um, what's your high concept? A high concept is a car and a lab key. I'm um, still going to school, just okay. barely has enough. Um, that's where it's just kind of always her priority because at least at school, she can go and use the showers at the gym. She can um, kind of, uh, you know, there's a place to go and sit where it's quiet and air conditioned or heated, whatever it is, and that sort of thing. And that is a huge, huge survival thing. She can stay there late if it's if the weather's really bad, you know, that kind of thing. So you're um, doing that thing where you're taking just enough credit hours to kind of that you can afford and so you can keep your status there. Mm -hmm. And okay. and uh, she's trying to get a job there you know, like at the labs and stuff, but she hasn't gotten one yet. So she does what she can to get a little extra cash. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, essentially she kind of illegally has a, a really inconvenient locker at the school gym. You know, she's got like a padlock on it. And while no one cuts it off, that she has a place to put her ramen and that kind of stuff. And it's just very much that kind of, of thing. Um, and she has a lab key to... Um, probably the computer lab, okay. um, you know, and that's what she's trying to get a degree in because uh, in, in her, everyone told her that that was the, the road to riches. Uh, and what, how does she dress? Um, you know, those Dickies shirts, uh, the ones that like last forever and they start out kind of stiff and everything. She had a set of those that, um, like, before she left, she had taken, like, her boyfriend wore those, and so she took those. So it's like the core of her stuff is sort of old uniform things for, you know, um, that, like, because he was, like, a delivery guy or something, so he mm -hmm. had, like, uniform pants and stuff. She had just taken those. They're the things that have held up. Okay. So basically that's the core of her wardrobe with a few other things like a denim jacket and, you know, shoes and stuff, but mostly she's just trying to keep things together and they launder really well. Uh, and we talked about your, your vision board scrambling enough to, to you know, just trying to keep go from semester to semester, kind of mm -hmm. keeping things up. Yep. 
Um, of course, one of the things being that if you go for too long, then old credits fall out. And that'll still be a little while, so. Yeah. Um, you say you're an independent valet, you do this parking thing and you, mm -hmm. you do some driving. Um, what what are this, the, the real downside slash danger of that job? Uh, I think one of the dangers is that, um, is that inherently people know where you're going to be. So if they want to like, you're, you've got cash in your pockets or you've got, you know, and that's it is if, if they're, you have a good chance of getting rolled if you end up having to park off in places where people can't see and stuff like that. So she has to be sort of hyper alert. Okay. Um, and, and she doesn't stay in one area for very long. So she, because she knows, I mean, she's been robbed before, so she knows that that will happen. Um, so she moves like through a cycle of places and kind of watches out for that. And, and how do you actually sleep in your car? Um, so she has, um, a pretty good, again, this is the thing of she's learned places where she can park her car for a while and not get bothered. Um, so as long as the weather's good, it's not that big of a deal. She's just gotta, you know, essentially find that place next to the, the dumpster behind, um, that, you know, Dollar Tree that like, it's okay because the the trash car truck doesn't come until five in the morning. So she has a good eight, you know, six hours before they show up or, you know, and that kind of thing. Are you, are you sleeping sitting up? Are you sleeping in the back seat? Are you sleeping in the trunk? Um, she, I know she keeps gear and stuff in the trunk. She pretty much sleeps in the, um, in the back seat. Okay. But, um, but she does have like, uh, what do you say? Um, she has like a, like it looks like one of those screen things that you know you would put on the driver's um, or the front window to keep the sun out. Uh -huh. She actually kind of puts that over the back seat so no one can see that there's actually someone there. Okay. So it's it looks like she's storing a, a sunscreen on All the right. back seat. Is that what she hopes it looks like? Hopes what it looks like. Yes, exactly. Right. We are going to take uh, about uh, eight eight or so minutes for a break. When we come back, we're going to kind of uh, sans dice rolls, uh, uh, set up the scenes and, and uh, uh, do do some things in our pilot, kind of establish relationships and uh, learn some more things about our characters. Does that sound okay? Okay, that's what we're going to do.
Bill, is it one for one on your refresh for all of your stunts? Take a drink. Uh, so you're going to start with uh, uh, the three, essentially two of your three of your choice, and then what you're the one from your kink, and then you get five refresh, and you can sell down as many of those as you want for extra stunts. Mind you, I only really have space for three extra stunts. So I will mention that uh, we've got the uh, role for your party there uh, for uh, uh, fate dice and all that stuff. And the, it's the, the DF at the top. Uh, to make it easier and faster for me as the GM on the GM side, I'm gonna be drawing from the deck of fate just because it's easier for me rather than clicking on the thing. So I'm gonna be trying to do that to keep things moving along here. <clears throat> Uh, so what this is, this next part, is the pilot, uh, which uh, kind of sets things up. In this, uh, we're going to kind of bring the characters together. We're going to try and figure out the, the relationships between them. Uh, you know, we'll get to, you know, a, a supernatural encounter. We're not really dicing any of this. This is all kind of narrative stuff to help establish. Um, this will, uh, uh, if in the course of this, uh, another aspect occurs to you, uh, you can, you have space for two more aspects. You can write that in. Uh, and you can also take this time to maybe figure out either assign your skills or if you're like, okay, you know, maybe my character's actually more like this. You can swap them around now at this point. Um, or figure out stunts that you think are, are particularly cool. Um, so we're going to kind of uh, uh, imagine this uh, as a show, uh, and uh, we, we've opened up with whatever title sequence. We don't know what that is yet. It's a pilot, so we've got the placeholder uh, 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 title sequence there that will change uh, for that. Um, and when we we come in on, uh, well, let me, let me actually say one thing. So things we're going to need to think about, maybe figure out where don't necessarily answer them, but uh, 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 right away, but we're going to need to figure out how much the the four of you know about the supernatural before this. Are you, you pretty novices or have you been doing this for a while? Um, how long have you been hunting? Uh, uh, would you consider yourself established or not? Um, and if you, if you are established, uh, uh, were you solo or you were part of another group before? Our default assumption is that the four of you have have made a connection uh, and you've worked together and you will work together uh, uh, again in, in the future, sharing resources, helping each other out, that kind of thing. So uh, when, when we come in here, uh, when the, the camera kind of comes in through the streets of San, San Gennaro, uh, Takahiro, is it, is it morning, afternoon, evening, night? Ooh, so it's night, uh, yeah, and it's uh, but it's been hot all day. Okay, so you can still feel the humidity at night. Oh yeah, uh, it's it's sticky and it's that kind of uh, hot, uh, sticky where uh, any kind of uh, uh, wind off the ocean is not doing anything, and every light uh, is just a cloud of mayflies and and bugs there would probably hear just a thwack of the heavier bugs hitting against the aluminum of the poles there. Um, and wh where is Takahiro right now? And what are they doing when the camera comes comes to them? Uh, so I think it's a ridiculously cool guitar riff that's going on right now. Uh, but Takahiro, um, a door opens, uh, a, a car comes in. It's a nice looking car. It's like a ridiculous, like 
you know, one of those golden hummers, like that type. Oh, yeah. Uh, the door opens up and Tahir is like shoved out of it. And he crumples down onto the ground and picks himself up, like brushes off a shoulder. He, he's wearing one of those awful like blue tuxedos that were really popular like a few mm-hmm. decades ago, but it's all like banged up. Um, and he looks like he's been beaten up and they they sling their baseball bat over their shoulder. They're sauntering off uh, looking for something to eat. They're incredibly hungover already, even though it's only like eight in the evening. Uh, and do you imagine that this is a suit that, that, that you keep, keep on a regular basis? Is this a specialty for this event? Uh, is, is uh, a, I a, stole a... it from my ex-boyfriend. Okay. So, um, and I used it because I forgot to go wash my clothes in the laundry. Uh, ab- absolutely. Uh, which of your colleagues do you know would be around this part of town at this time of night? Ooh, I know that Indy usually parks around here. Okay. That's what I, that's why I asked uh, politely to be, that's why I was so nice they dropped off here uh, in this area. And uh, I'm looking for the car. Uh, I, re- I realize I'm wearing shades at night. Okay. So I finally put them up into my hair to take a better look and look for, uh, look for Indy. Uh, Indy, what is the, the 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 feature of this neighborhood that that makes it a place that you would would hang out? Um, one is that uh, it's like they've got hedges here, which means when you go to park, you actually have a little bit of chance of uh, uh, privacy, okay, and stuff like that. Um, but the other thing is is there is some decent dumpster diving in okay. the area. So um, like uh, there's, a, there's a supermarket and they actually like do toss their old cans out and stuff like that. So you can get like canned food and stuff that, you know, it's old, but it's dented, but it's still not bad and okay. other things like that. So, is, it, is it a supermarket or is it more like a bodega or it's what? More, it's more like, yeah, it's more like a convenience store okay. you know like they have stuff for the the two apartment buildings that are in the block as well so they've got like you know that mix of diapers and and uh tuna and you know okay. um and and soap and all that stuff because there it's a little ways away before the actual real shopping district okay is. so so it is is a place probably that is undergoing some gentrification you know used to be a more more tight residential neighborhood we've got now maybe some architecture firms and things like that that have moved into the buildings and you know they've got their their dumpsters and things um and what are you doing when you actually catch sight of this uh uh, powder blue uh uh uh, uh, figure of the damned um oh geez uh i I want you to imagine it is it is 95 out and it is only just now kind of getting a little cool yeah um so i think that what she's got is um she's got a popsicle um one of those uh like red white and blue bomb pops you know Mm -hmm. so it's like kind of really um awkward sized and everything it's probably dripping down her hand but they're the cheapest ones yeah um and and they're highly serviceable and she's pretty much set herself up on top of uh on top of one of the little fences that's like right up against the hedge so that she's getting a bit of, well, she likes to think it's a breeze. It's mostly just the cars going by. So it's more that. So she's kind of like looking out between the, the hedge and the building there. And she sees. Uh, Yeah. You you see uh, 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 Takahiro uh, is making kind of a, I don't want to say a beeline, but probably an amble towards where your car is at. All right. Um, and I'll give him a wave. Um, yeah. And and sort of stroll over, what do you say, walk down the fence a little bit and then jump down into the hedge and go through it. So she comes out with sticks and stuff on her. Oh, yeah. But, you know, she's holding her popsicle up the whole time. She okay. 
Oh my god, popsicle! Yeah, do you want you some? You have one for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome. This is why you're my favorite, favorite, favorite person. Oh, did you have a little something to drink today? Uh, no. I'm fine. So, oh, mm -hmm. Good? Yeah, yeah. So what are you doing here? Uh, I was looking, look, I was looking for you. I was looking for you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to like put my arms around you. Uh -huh. We're free to let him crumple onto the ground and not hug you. No, no, <laughs> she'll try to catch you, but she's also trying to keep the, the popsicle up too. So it's a kind of uh, awkward, like both of you are slowly sliding down to your knees, so. <laughs> There, there's some yuppies walking around, walking their dogs and things that kind of give you a, a look. They, they mutter under, under their, their breath and, you know, uh, uh, it definitely draw some attention as that happens. Um, it's okay. So do you need a place tonight? Yeah. Or are we going to do something? Yeah, my my mom and I got into a fight again. I can't, I, but you know, as, as soon as I get money, I'm moving moving out. But I need to I need to sleep in your car again. Indy, uh, uh, of your two other colleagues, which of them are you actually waiting for here? Uh, I think. I think Jamie um, wanted to stop by um, because, well, I'm not sure what she wanted, but she mentioned that she would uh, bring by some of the uh, muffins that were still in the case at the end of the day. So I'm pretty much all about the carbs right now. Okay. Gonna do that heavy so, carb loading there. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so you can get uh, uh, a Takahiro kind of set onto the, the, the you know, a seated place there. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, tell me, uh, Jamie, what has been the trial of this day? What has made this day just, just super shitty? Uh, I think like a, some kind of flu has been going through the off the, the, the cafe. So I had to, a couple people just could not come into work today, so I had to probably cover for several people at once. Yeah, and uh, you know, everybody who came in, they were doing that cough, that summer cold cough there, and then they're handing you the money after they've coughed into their hands, and it's been like that that all day. Um, at some point, the hand sanitizer ran out, uh, uh, and uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so you, you've closed up. Uh, uh, how many muffins do you have with you? Uh, probably like a, a, a tray or two. I imagine if there's a flu going around, people may not be going around for coffee oh, yeah. as much. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll assume that your, your uh, uh, employer, these are, they've, they did the thing where every once in a while they're allowed to like keep things up an extra day. Uh, so these, these are extra stale uh, ones that you've, you've got there. Um, and uh, you will see uh, Takahiro and uh, 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 Indy there. Uh, you're going to meet up with Indy. Um, and Takahiro looks a little, what, a little worse for wear. And let me ask you this, Jamie. We, we, we know that Takahiro and Indy have a decent relationship and work together. What, what's your opinion of Takahiro, Jamie? Uh, I don't think I'm a huge fan uh, he's a little, uh, I think he and Plaster both are a little rough around the edges for my taste. Okay. Is it the loudness? Is it the uh, 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 attitude? What is, what is it that, that, that rubs you a little bit the wrong way? Uh, with Takahiro, probably the attitude, I, I think. I don't know. I mean, like... Uh, uh, and so to a certain, I mean, like he's a knight, right? So I imagine he he goes out there and and gets in fist fights with monsters on purpose, and that's a little bit like no, no, you 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 don't you research things and then you jump them by surprise, and then if everything goes right, you never fight at all. 
Uh, yeah, and uh, so uh, attack a hero. You will see uh, uh, Jamie. Jamie, you're probably still in your uniform. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, uh, that that kind of thing where you you know how those uniforms get towards the end of the day, a little bit of the spritz of the cream and stuff like that. It looks a little worn out, and uh, uh, Jamie comes comes walking up to where the two of you are at. Jamie, 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 Jamie. I love you. And uh, this is when I say that Takahiro loves Jamie so much and wants to protect her from all the things. Uh, I think I'm still using my customer service voice and just like, <laughs> hello, it's nice to meet you. Here are your muffins. Oh my God, muffins. Did you, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Indy, we have muffins. This is why Extra Jamie hero. is an angel. Yes, we will. We will greedily take the the muffins from you and stuff our mouths. Um, it, but she will offer you the rocket pop if you want to take a lick. So she's like, not greedy at all. Uh, I'm I'm good, thank you. <laughs> Just to, I I don't I don't need that right from your mouth. No, thank you. Hey, hey, I'm healthy. Yeah, look how it changed the color of my lips. Uh, super kissable right now. Sticks her blue, blue tongue out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, so, Andy, what's your, what is your uh, impression of Jamie? You, you seem like to, to, to uh, consider, consider her a peer. Um, yeah, Jamie's like pretty smart, um, but she's a little bit, like she's really into all of her her books and her her stuff like that and she's i don't know how do how do you put that um it just seems like she isn't really aware of how tough the world is okay that's she's naive still uh let me let me close the circle here uh let me ask plaster uh, of your two bandmates, the drummer and the bassist, uh, uh, which of them knows one of one of the the the, the your eye hunt colleagues? Uh, the drummer Kelly. Okay. Uh, and uh, which which one do they know? Uh, I think that Kelly. Um, also works as a barista at the same Starbucks. Okay. As Amy. Uh, so, uh, uh, and of course, uh, she called in sick today, uh, even though she wasn't. Um, so, uh, tell me, uh, Plaster, uh, when the cop uh, uh, throws you against the, the back of the cop car, um, uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, shoves your head down onto it. Uh, what is the reason that they broke up the gig? I mean, it's early. What 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 went down that the cops came in here, and now they they've got you uh, 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 arm behind your back uh, and uh, uh, on the back of the cop car. Um, great question. <laughs> um general fighting that i was probably instigating a lot um bad people were mad about the primaries okay so uh uh the, the there's a big uh, uh sanders warren fight that broke out uh uh in there uh and then somebody somebody showed their biden shirt and all hell broke loose uh, and uh, the, the cops were there like quick, like maybe they were in the area looking for, for something to do. Uh, and they pull, pulled that out and uh, you were swinging fists and you're not sure if you, you clocked a cop or not. Uh, but all you know is that, that you are in the back of this car. Jamie, your phone rings. And of course it will, will pop up with, with Kaylee's uh, uh, name on there. And uh, she'd be like, uh, 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 Jamie. Yes. I, I already know this is going to go badly. Um, 
and you can hear there's like lots of noise in the background and like shouting and stuff. Uh, and she says, "Hey, uh, we're we're at uh, the 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 Rathskeller, and uh, the the cops just uh, uh, broke up uh, the scene, and uh, they've got uh, uh, plaster, uh, and uh, they're like, uh, I, I think think they might be." getting ready to to bust some knees or something i don't know okay okay uh, i'm gonna cover the the speak the speaker and be like okay uh yeah plaster got arrested we gotta we gotta go help him Plaster arrested oh it's so cool oh he's so cool no no oh I, not not cool not cool why if he gets his fool ass in jail we're, we're not gonna have him for the hunt or the next hunter or whatever i i mean jail break jail break yeah <laughs> i'm like get in the car uh and i don't know which which i don't uh, know how to say this i think i'm drunk <laughs> and then i start i start puking outside the window <laughs> And it's red, white, and blue, of course, from the popsicle, <laughs> which makes it purple uh, at this point. Uh-huh. Uh So, uh, uh, Indy, it's just a few blocks away. Would you would you drive uh, over to the area or drive close and then park? What do you want to do? Oh man, just a few blocks away. That's a hard one. You get a primo spot here. You could make your friends go on on foot several city blocks. And, and I think about that, and then I look over at Takahiro, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so uh, I, I hand the tray of delicious muffins back to Jamie, and uh, we'll drive over there. Okay. Uh, uh, so, Plaster, uh, what is your behavior generally when faced with officers of the law like this? Remarkably friendly, actually. Okay. <laughs> um, Despite the, the aforementioned violence, um, Plaster really just wants to be everybody's pal. So okay. he's, you know, you guys were there pretty quickly. Um, you're a fan. <laughs> and uh, the the there there's the the sound of the click as they they put the the cuffs on you. Um, uh, hey, we and, just met. <laughs> and and uh, the 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 one guy, if you look up and you see one of these cops has has a black eye. Um, oh. and, uh, he is looking down at you and, uh, uh, he and his, his buddy, uh, the other people are getting cleared away, but they, they take you and they sit you down on the curb, uh, next to the police car. And, uh, the, the guy who doesn't have a black eye says, you stay right there, son. Okay. Uh, and you see the kind of the the the, the there they are are rousting people. Uh, some of the cops are 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 uh, uh, you know moving people along. A couple of the people who were uh, really in the heat of it are getting thrown in the back of of cop cars. Uh, but it looks like this is kind of dispersing, kind of uh, ending. But you're you're kind of like they've they've got you seated there, like like you're being set aside for something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, you see Kelly. Kelly, she's like in the crowd and she, she looks at you and she goes, and then she leaves. Mm -hmm. I try to wave, but you know. Okay. <laughs> I think that guy's my dad. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and uh, the, the, the cops are kind of standing over there uh, uh, talking. Uh, they've got uh, another. Another guy kind of cuffed, and uh, uh, they they uh, pick you up. One of them comes over and picks you up by the arm, and another one kind of comes over and and picks the other uh, uh, young person up by their arm, and uh, they they go to move back into the club, which has been cleared and is empty. This seems a little odd to you. Okay. Um, I hope you're not trying to do bum fights or anything, because, like, 
I don't do that anymore. <laughs> and uh, uh, they they look at you, and you the guy without the black eye looks like he's maybe like like uncertain about bringing you in here. Um, uh, but they he he brings you in, you know, pulls up a chair that's been knocked over, sits you down on it at, at a table, still cuffed, uh, and sits the other guy down. Uh, Cass, you've parked. The, the three of you have kind of moved into the crowd, and the three of you would see these two cops. Situations have been broken up, but they're they're moving uh, 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 plaster and some other other person who's handcuffed uh, uh, back into the club. It's a little odd. That is a little odd, but it's a club, right? Yeah. So it means it's got a like couple of exits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what do you do? Uh, do I see any of the staff that work there? Looks like they've gotten rousted. Really? Yeah. So they're all sitting out there? They, they've been moved along. It looks like uh, uh, the, the place has been getting cleared right now. I kind of turn back and go, that's not right. Um. Yeah, let's see if we can get in through the kitchen back door. I would yeah. think that would be the most likely. Takahiro, Jamie, how do you how do you get the the, the back door open? Uh, <laughs> I scream, Leroy Jenkins, and I take my bat and smash it open and start running in. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you could, there's a, a moment where everybody looks at the, the, the door and then the bat comes down with the, the shout and the uh, uh, handle comes off and uh, uh, pull that open and, and run in uh, the back. Jamie, what's your take on that? I am, I'm just like, oh God, not again. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to sort of hang back and try to get a feel for, for what's going on because this, I mean, the they're acting a little strange and there's no reason to think that like monsters are involved, but there's no reason to think monsters aren't involved. Uh, yeah. What is the telltale smell of vampires? Uh, is it Axe body spray? Uh, is it Jasmine? Uh, what is it? Cinnamon? What is it? I'm going to go. I'm, with ex, I'm ex carding the X. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, kind of like a, a cave smell, like like old stagnant air that hasn't moved in a while. Yeah. Like they carry just that little bit of sense of the grave with them. And you will catch that whiff of it that says to you that there have been, been vampires here or are here right now. Um, and, uh, uh, what, what is your, your take Cass when, uh, uh, Takahiro comes, comes rushing in? I finished off the last of my rocket pop, uh, cause I don't want to lose that freshest, precious icy sugar. Um, and I kind of look inside behind and look at Jamie and go, okay, um, and, and she sort of stops and goes, should I go get something from the trunk? Which is where she keeps all of her gear. Yeah, yeah, I'll try to stall. Okay. Um, and I think she'll go back and get um, a couple of mag lights. Okay. Um, and then um, like one of those uh, sort of little spotlight things that uh, runs on a car battery. So it's kind of like a crate that she carries. It has a spotlight on it. They've used it before because it's a club. So they're like big dark places. Uh, absolutely. You go and grab that. We cut to uh, inside plaster. Uh, you will see from the back of the club come in a trio of people. They're dressed sort of oddly. They're clearly been kind of hanging around. Uh, you may have seen them during the show. You're not sure. Um, uh, but uh, you see them 
uh, go on up to to the cops uh, uh, and uh, they hand the cops some money um, and uh, the cops kind of gesture to you and you see the three of them uh, kind of uh, uh, start uh, wandering over this way uh, towards the, the you're, you're a little further away than the other person uh, and you see the three of them heading that and the cops are leaving what would you do, Plaster? Well, I'm quite thoughtful right now, I suppose. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's, okay. yeah. coming over here. It looks like uh, and it, we're, still, we're still cuffed. The cops are leaving. This does not look like good. Yeah, that guy, that guy is not my dad, <laughs> for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, it was a joke. It was a joke. I'm sorry if I punched you in the eye. Shit. Huh. Um, oh, you know what? I'm an agitator. How's this other guy doing? Uh, he he looks freaked out. Like he freaked out because these three are coming at him a little a little hungry. Yeah. Well uh, then. Okay. Yeah. This is my opportunity to go. Hey, hey, buddy. Huh? Huh? One, one, two, three. Now. Okay. <laughs> and I jump out of the chair and try and rush these guys. <laughs> okay. You kind of jump up and do that. And even as you're jumping up, this other guy's like, ah, and you hear, Leroy <laughs> and the back door of the club uh, comes poof, open. Uh, and I won't say like a straight line, since I don't think Takahiro can do a straight line right this second, but I think Takahiro comes. He thinks it's a straight line. That's Absolutely. the important thing. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh plaster you tell me what what you do this is what uh, uh when when this happens what do you do do you knock one of the vampires down do you separate them what what is what happens here i mean i was about to rush them and then i see this and kind of stop for a moment and look back and forth and just go you guys are fucked and then i continue and rush, try and knock one of them down with my head or the chair or whatever the hell i can hit them with yeah you think if they hadn't been like startled by that they might have been able to to get at you because you had to kick the chair up and get balanced mm -hmm. but i think now your head uh, goes into the the solar plexus of one of these guys uh and you know it doesn't knock the air at them because they don't have any air in them uh but you do you know go uh, you and he go flying. There's a, a sort of crash, and both of you are on the floor. Uh, Takahiro, you see this guy who's not uh, not your friend, uh, 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 Plaster, but another guy who's getting up and is like trying to like uh, you know do something. And these two vampires, uh, uh, teeth out, uh, uh, fangs up, uh, 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 coming in on him. Uh, what do you do? Uh, my mother always taught me how to deal with uh, Filipino monsters, a swung pretty close to vampires. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I got this. And so I swing and go for the fangs. Absolutely. Knock their teeth out. like for one. Um, And is that the, the classic mode for dealing with you imagine is, 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 is ne negating the bite right away? Yeah, absolutely. Like making sure they can't take their life, uh, your life force from you. So you will hit this one. There's that clang as as bat hits skull, uh, uh, and and they they fall back, grabbing at their their mouth. Uh, uh, this uh, other vampire probably grabs you and throws you onto the stage. Uh, you go through uh, the essentially. It looks like the the uh, uh, band equipment for uh, uh, the, the the plastic unicycle. Um, you know, because uh, uh, it looks like only half of their their logo was left up. So tsh, you will go over. Um, uh, Cass, Jamie, uh, I think that's the moment you will will come in that back door. That's right, and. Uh... Jamie's got the mag lights, and I essentially am just going to fire on that spotlight and put it on those, the attackers. Okay, so there's one that's thrown, Takahiro. There's one that's uh, on the ground uh, with a plaster, and there's the, the third one who hasn't been engaged yet. So, so who, which, who are you aiming at? Probably going to go for, uh, I want to get him in the eyes, if that makes any sense. Okay. So I'm probably going for the one that's sort of unengaged, so to speak. He's had okay. the other one toss that guy or whatever. So I'm going for that because that, that puts them in that light and they can't see who's moving around in the darkness around him. 
Okay, so yeah, you've got, and he's kind of, you know, doing that. That gives that other guy uh, 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 with who's cuffed a chance to, to get out of the, the way of this. Jamie, what do you do? Uh, I think I'm going to the bar to grab something, like something high proof enough to burn. So uh, look over. This is a, there's probably a bottle of Everclear there. Uh, you can grab that off of that. Um, do you carry a lighter for this kind of thing? Are you making a Molotov? What do you imagine is going on here? Oh, I, I always carry an, a lighter. You never know okay. when you need to burn something. Absolutely. Uh, so you want to uh, grab that? Or are you going to douse this guy? Uh, yeah, yeah. For the, yeah. Okay. So run up, and then uh, even before he can kind of get his, his vision oriented, you've splashed him down with that. Uh, uh, Plaster, I think you will recognize the smell of now uh, grave scent and uh, uh, alcohol, high proof alcohol in the air. Um, and uh, this vampire is going to, to get up uh, pretty close to you, both on the ground. How do you deal with this vampire? Now, what, what, where was that other guy again? The the other cuffed guy the other cuff guy has has kind of uh, uh scooted back and he's trying to get to the front door now get kind of get uh uh, uh you know uh, a little bit out of the way now that he's gotten some breathing room well he's no help um i'll uh try and swing my hands out underneath me and get the cuffs like kind of like around this vampire's mouth from behind uh like a like a horse and a thingamajig do you imagine you're pretty good at that kind of thing this isn't my first rodeo. <laughs> okay. So there is that thing. I imagine there is that maybe the sound of popping, you know, as you, you have to do that chest and then mm. and uh, it's probably not a great way to kill a vampire, but it is a great way to keep a vampire held, right? Mm -hmm, that's what I figure. Um, dude, is, is around their neck? Is around the mouth? Where do you, how do you have Yeah, all through the mouth there. Like, okay. yeah, yeah. Kind of got that. We see you pressing, uh, holding them. Um, Takahiro, you have blunted the fangs of this uh, vampire. Uh, there are uh, a couple others who are here. What are you doing? Yeah, so I, I get up uh, from the remains of the instruments that I crashed into and I just scream, woo, I'm so drunk. And I just like go back into it. <laughs> and, like, um, But I feel like there there's a way that I can, I feel like Plaster and I have like a special move that we've worked out together. Sure, what so is I, it? Yeah, so um, I'm thinking it's like a Persona 5 moment, right? Like when the two characters like set up a move. Mm -hmm. uh, and I say, Blaster, the fastball punk special. And then like, there's, a, there's obviously a drum going off in my head that no one else can hear. Uh, okay. As I, as I go down for the leg so that Blaster gets a good shot um, for the head. Okay. so. Takahiro's got the legs locked, has swept the legs, got them locked. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, tell me, Plaster, how do you finish this this vampire? A uh, twist. Like, as far as I can twist. Okay. Uh, it, yeah. it, is, it is a loud sound as that crackles. Yeah. Um, so you're down. You've got this one out. Uh, Takahiro's with you. Uh, uh, Jamie, you've got this fellow doused. There's another free vampire. It looks like the, the third vampire is is out and head crunched. What do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to light the doused one. Whoosh. There is that that whoosh of high proof uh, alcohol. Um, uh, is this your first rodeo for lighting things on fire like this? Or is this something you've had to do before? Uh, I think fire works on a lot. It, it at least annoys most uh, monsters. So I, I I burn things a lot when I have to. So there is that that screech of the vampires. The fire hits it. Uh, the smell of it, uh, and then the sprinkler system uh, going off. Um, and you will realize, uh, Cass, that the cops are not that far away. What do you do, Cass? I think I walk over to the door um, and I engage the lock. Okay, so uh, uh, get get to the front door and uh, uh, put the, the, the lock in on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yeah, and you'll see that one of the cops uh, is at the, the front door and uh, as you step back is uh, pounding on it 
uh, because of the noise and stuff. Um, Takahiro, yeah, you 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 wasted that vampire. When a vampire like this vampire gets wasted, what happens? Ooh. Is the body still there? Do they vanish? Is there a skeleton left behind? Uh, they explode. Yeah, yeah, it gets really awkward uh, because all the blood that wasn't theirs starts to react violently and they start deflating at the same time. Um, it's kind of like like Roger Rabbit. It's kind of like that situation. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So like, uh, uh, I know that if we don't get clear soon that the bodies are going to sort of like sadly implode and get gross stuff on us. Possibly like the blood is caustic at this point. So what would you do? Uh, I look at it and first I go, yeah, high five, Fluster. <laughs> and then I grab him before he high fives me <laughs> and pull him away to safety and scream, this one, fire, vampire, a hole. Oh, my head. <laughs> Plaster, would you would you go along with this as Takahiro uh, uh, tries to, to get you uh, out uh, uh, a little clear here? Yeah, low five. I'm having a thing with the. So. <laughs> Absolutely, you kind of talk about that. You get you get out, uh, and even though it's hot outside, once you get outside, it the, the that cool air will hit you, and that is a blessed relief there. Um, uh, how big a fire do you think this is, Jamie? Well, I mean, okay, you know good world this uh club would be you know have pretty good fire safety things and have lots of fire inflammable stuff but that i'm a, guessing they true. cut some corners yeah uh so i think this club is going up so how are you dealing with that uh the the other guy who was tied to a chair he, he's out right is he Okay, so I, I wasn't sure if Tech a Hero or someone had grabbed him. If not, uh, I'm going to go look for that guy. Okay. Uh, where is this guy, and, and why is it difficult to get him out of here? Uh, I think he's just kind of crumbled in a corner, and it's hard to move him because he's he's just in shock. Like, the, what, what? This, this is too much for him. He is checked out. Uh, he will come back when it's normal again. Yeah, and, and and you're okay athletics, but it's not necessarily your 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 strong point. But you're kind of dragging him out, even as the fire is starting to fill. Get that that smoke that is that combination of 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 wood and cloth and alcohol and plastic that's all there. Um, what are you doing, uh, uh, Indy? I think uh, there was one of the vampires that was brought down but not right by the fire one yep um if i can i will try to grab its wallet um, okay and and then uh a because that gives me some information but the other thing is is i could use a little cash and then i'll go help kaylee or sorry excuse me uh jamie uh drag this guy out of here um and, and try to shepherd plaster and takahiro out are you more interested in getting the wallet and getting out safely or are you more interested in uh, gacking this vampire and claiming the bounty? Oh, there's a bounty? Oh, there's a standing $500 bounty on vampires. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So what do I got to do to get the bounty? <laughs> you tell me. How would you how would you take out this vampire in the middle of an inferno? Oh, uh, well, that's easy because it's an inferno. That's like a huge advantage to me. Um, let's see here. I've got Keep that. Keep in mind, you're going to want to have some proof. I know. That's it. Um so, uh, and that's the thing is, is that they do that whole deflating thing and afterwards you can claim, uh, oh, I think that uh, no one wants the teeth, right? Because they're awful. Um, but I do think that like when they do the deflation, there's uh, the sort of, um, their skulls always kind of because because when they become vampires, there's like a lot of swelling and stuff that, that actually what happens is that that nose septum thing is not nece um, necessary. And on most of the vampires, it comes loose and you could just pull out that sort of place that would be right where the eye sockets and the, the nose bone is. And that's like a standard vampire trophy that you take in one because it's pretty recognizable that it's been through the process. It's a little mummified. 
I'm so glad I married you. Yes, um, exactly. So anyway. You uh, know, it's just all that yeah, swelling in there. There's you, nothing yeah, natural will, will, about vampires. So uh, you kind of go, you get this uh, vampire uh, before the, the fire kind of catches it and, and take that out. Uh, was that vampire already out before you did that? Oh, I thought he was. He was less out than than it, should, it would have been good, but I just like whapped him with the mag light then. Uh, plaster, uh, you took out this vampire. It's doing that thing where it's starting to to do that weird deflate, um, and the room's on fire. What do you do? Um, and and this this other one. What he's got dibs on right now. That's correct. But the bloody stuff is caustic. Yeah, how would you how would you deal with that? What what do you have to 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 keep it from getting too nasty for you? Um well, I'm cuffed and put your hands are in front of you, so that's at least my a little bit of in front of me. Yeah. Um you know, um hmm I'm going to go quickly grab the mic stand okay. <laughs> and uh, try and, uh, you know, shuffle this thing, uh, you know, sort of stick it there and then okay. and, and prod it along and, and kind of drag what I can do. So it's a, it is a, a messy, rough thing as you're pushing along, trying to get this thing yeah. here. Um, what about you, Takahiro? Ooh. Uh, while the fire is raging around us, I say, oh, I could really use a burger. And <laughs> <laughs> like, I, walk, I walk out okay. looking for a burger to eat. <laughs> Tell me, uh, uh, Takahiro, are the cops outside? Yes, uh, the cops are in fact outside, but uh, the one that's outside uh, is a regular client of mine. And uh, so when we see each other, we just sort of like give this nod. Yeah. Uh, gets in the way of the these couple of cops who kind of clearly went into something shady. They kind of, uh, 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 as you you head out, um, uh, 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 plaster, you get this headpiece off of this uh, thing with the uh, uh, the, the, the metal metal mic stand um do you do you head off a, a side entrance or are you going out the front door with your your glorious trophy well what's closer the place is on fire oh let's uh you, you tell me um you know what i like a grand entrance and a grand exit alike let's just go right through the front door okay um so plaster uh uh, uh comes out that front door mic stand and uh head bits on it um jimmy what's your take on this now i hope they're gonna distract everyone enough that i can just kind of quietly sneak out with the tied up guy absolutely yeah you can get get out of there um what about you uh uh uh, uh jamie not jamie uh cass um, at this point, it's all about hurrying Takahiro into the car and getting out of there. So um, fortunately, I'm just waiting for the cops to kind of get to one side or the other and then we'll get in the car and zoom out. Tell me, Plaster, what is it that keeps you from getting thrown in the back of another cop car here in this situation? Um, shh. I just assume that nobody can catch me. <laughs> like you take off, yeah, like I'm standing running, things. yeah, yeah, running. It's like out of the way, everybody. Caustic vampire head. <laughs> Shit, that's what we should be calling this band. <laughs> Uh, and I think you kind of do disperse out. There's smoke. The 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 sirens have uh, have hit. The emergency services have come. Put that out. You guys all head, you know, in various different directions. Uh, you probably make some money off of this, uh, 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 you know, a little bit. The uh, you know, uh, but of course there was a little bit of noise and things like that. And of course they they're going to charge you uh, some extra fees and things. 
uh, but uh, you'll, you'll walk away with a little bit of money. Um, however, everybody smells like smoke now. Uh, uh, you know, if you've ever been uh, around a fire like this, then, then you know how it just gets in everything there. Yeah, so I think we all go to the laundromat together, you know? Absolutely. Um, anybody want to add any new aspects to their, their characters here? Or, or change the ones that they've, they've come up with. Um, I see that Takahiro has uh, uh, added a, a, a couple. Let's, what, what did you add? Uh, so the first one I added was bad first questions later. Okay. Um, which I think happens regardless if uh, Takahiro is drunk or not. I'm not sure if the drunk is like a regular thing or not yet. I think it's just a semi-regular thing. Uh, and the second aspect is my ex-boyfriend is in a swung. Uh, and the, and tell us tell us uh, uh, what what the, the aswang means in this in this context. Uh, so the aswang came like other Filipinos; they migrated to America like everybody else. Uh, they have different sex, but the one that I was with, uh, he could change into this huge dog uh, like creature. Uh, and could also, uh, and, and had like incredible strength uh, and speed as well. Uh, a really good hunter, basically. And we used to, we used to work together to hunt down other monsters. Oh, okay. Uh, why, why did you break up? Because uh, he wanted to get married and I didn't want to get married. Get married um what what would that even what would that kind of in, uh, thing have involved uh i mean is that 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 a common thing um among the people uh, it would have been unusual it would have been semi-unusual in some places like back home in manila uh, more people are doing it but uh here and besides my mom is a really famous aswang hunter so that would have been like Oh, so I didn't know that your mom, uh, mom was a f famous asshole. Tell, tell us about that. What did you, did you grow up knowing that or did you learn that later? Uh, I think I found my mom out. Uh, I caught her like dragging home the body uh, of a, of a manananggal, which is another type of a swang. So like just the upper half with the bat wings out. Uh, and she tried to say, this is not what it looks like. So, because when my dad left, she had to do whatever she could to make ends meet. Um, but that's why she, she made me promise I'd never get into monster hunting. And, and you, you broke that promise. She just taught me so well, and I'm just really good at killing things. Do you think she's suspicious? I, I think it's very Asian in which she is suspicious, but she's not gonna ask. Uh, okay. And she's going to pretend it's, but, but if push comes to shove, uh, then it's going to be pretty bad. I, I see your top uh, skill is fighter. It's a good, you know, you uh, straight combat and then uh, good in athlete and survivor. So you've got all the stress boxes and all the, the, the stress consequences there. Thank you, so, Kyle, for pointing out that I should get all the stress boxes. So. Yeah. I know who's the tank. Uh, tell me, what did you choose as your stunts? Oh, okay. So I got I got a lot. I got four. So uh, I'll just I'll just go through it really quickly. Sure. Uh, first is little black book. You've helped a lot of people, and they appreciate it. Anytime you spend a fate point to add a story detail, you can create or modify a character you've helped in the past who owes their current success or stability to you. And I think these are all the people I've been like a fake boyfriend for, or a okay. boyfriend for hire for. Uh, I'm also a dodgy motherfucker, so I copy touch unless I want it. Ooh, that sounds so emotional. Um, but also, <laughs> uh, anytime you use athlete to dodge an attack, take plus two. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And then I also got shake it off once per session, spend a fate point to shake off a mental consequence, reduce a moderate consequence to a mod one if the slot is available, or remove a mild consequence entirely. Mm -hmm. uh, and last two are specialization. Choose a type of monster or magical tradition. That's the one where my mom comes in. Okay. Uh, you get a plus two to all occultist roles relating to your area of expertise. I was thinking Filipino monsters, basically. Okay. Uh, or anything if, that's like kind of related. Yeah. If you have some sources 
for me and want to send me some notes, uh, uh, I will, I'll definitely integrate that. Um, and your last one? Uh, pain don't hurt, which also sounds uh, emotional. <laughs> like, is it obvious what kind of like mess of a character? <laughs> You're a bunch of scars, scar yeah. tissue and, and pain. Uh, so pain don't hurt when you're hit by a physical source of harm, spend a fate point to ignore some of it and turn it back around. Reduce the hit by two, take a boost. Uh, only do this once per hit. Anytime you take a major consequence, get the edge. Ooh, that's, that is nice. That is nice. All right. Uh, Kyle, let's come to Jamie. Um, oh, you added a couple. Uh, uh, tell me the, about the aspects you added. Uh, I added almost always monsters. Uh, I think Jamie is a little quick to leap to a uh, supernatural explanation. Okay. That's nice. Good good perception, but at the, the same time, uh, perhaps a, a, a little quick on the draw. Okay. Uh, and what else? Uh, I added fire good. <laughs> Um, fire works on most monsters and she's, you know, pretty good with it, but she maybe uses it a bit too often sometimes. Uh, and I see you took your great as a cultist. Good, good, solid thing for the Evelina, uh, investigator and socialite. Nice, nice. Uh, those are good, uh, picks there. Um, what did you take for stunts? Uh, I have the Evelina stunt, but I, I know stuff. And I took two of the uh, occultist stunts because I'm okay. real into that. So I've got defensive <clears throat> defensive charms. So I can uh, defend against supernatural abilities with occultist uh, if I have a bit of time to pre prepare. And I've got lore hound. So uh, I get an additional free invoke when I make an advantage using my knowledge of the supernatural. Oh, nice. And I also took a uh, cool as a cucumber. Um, since I'm unflappable, I think I have a certain, I mean, from years of working food service, yes. uh, I think I'm just, I've had enough angry customers yell at me that it's just, no, it doesn't even register anymore. I like that uh, very much. Uh, Sherry, uh, I see that you got uh, uh, added one. Yeah. Uh, what did you add? I had lots of good junk in the trunk. So <laughs> essentially that's where- There's all, a double-edged one. Exactly, okay. but you know, um, but yeah, she's, uh, she keeps her, she keeps things that she thinks might be useful at some point in the trunk. And okay. it's always, that's the go-to spot. So, um, I, you know, I still haven't picked all my skills, but I went, I actually went heavy with gorilla. Gorilla, interesting. The strategist, yeah. insurrectionist, urban tactician. Okay. Yeah, essentially, okay. I thought that was a really good fit for being a driver in this okay. area. And then I also took the stunt associated with it, which is small unit tactics. So once per scene, when I create an advantage reflecting team tactics, I can add an additional free invoke to it. The catch mm. is two different characters have to use those invokes. Oh, nice. So... Uh. What else did you take for uh, st uh, stunts? Okay, so I took my, uh, essentially, since I took the um, FUI, I took driving as the kind. So I took fancy driving, driver's drive. Any aspect that you create around your vehicles or drones gains an additional free invoke. Uh, additionally, any defend action you make while driving or piloting gets plus two. So if I can use my car to some advantage, mm -hmm. um, that's that's good for everyone. And then basic protocol FUI cache. So FUIs um, do tech and tools. They solve problems. If they have access um, to even rudimentary tools once per scene, they can eliminate a um, situational aspect without needing to overcome it or anything. They flip oh. a switch, they hit a button, they unplug something and it's fixed so long as a tool could fix it. Um, and then the other thing that I took just cause it sounded fun was impressive escape. You're very good at walking away um, from explosions while putting on sunglasses. When you use your spy skill set to create an advantage as a diversion for escape, it can also act as an attack action. Interesting. So, uh, so uh, that's interesting because it does give you uh, uh, an attack option because uh, otherwise looking at your skill set, you don't have a lot of, of skills that can be used for attack. No. No. Um, uh, 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 and uh, you probably want at least a, a plus one in, in an app athlete for defend right um all right Why just just so telling cool you from the practical athlete. side of things okay um and there was like 
Yeah, because otherwise I would have to use my car to defend. To yeah. Defend. Okay, that seems reasonable. And I'll, I have one more skill, so I'll look to see yeah. if there's something else I can do. Does athlete, now, one of the things I was unclear is if you take athlete, do you get like the additional stress and consequence or something like that? Yes, if you if you take the, the at the level, you would be taking it at, um, I believe, uh, you would get an additional plus one. I have to take a look, but I'm pretty sure it's just a plus one uh, stress level and a plus one consequence. I don't even know what that means, but okay. I'll go through it. Thank you. For you. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. And uh, what about for plaster? Uh, you're still thinking about your extra aspects? I oh, am. Yeah. Okay. Um, you took influencer. Good. Uh, a solid uh, skill there. We'll get some people on the ground. We'll get some boots on the ground for you um uh, uh and fighter that makes sense and survivor uh so that's good stuff uh so survivor is going to give you some extra mental stress um okay. and your level in athlete uh at fair is also going to give you a little extra physical stress um what'd you take for your stunts what have i got here it wasn't entirely clear to me which things count as stunts or not oh, um sure. like in terms of like i know that there's a couple things associated with kinks and I'm not sure if those oh. are things you get automatically or if they count as stunts or what, but. Uh, so you get the first, uh, the base level kink is one of your three starting stunts. Gotcha. Uh, and then I, th I think you can take uh, one of the other of the, the kink stunts as uh, if you want to uh, reduce your refresh by one. Gotcha. All right. So the kink, st uh, the, let's see, the 66 starting stunt is uh, people who know people um, when you spend a fate point to declare a scene detail and that scene details a character you know they're an expert they Ooh. have relevant skill or they have a, a slightly lower relevant skill with a small group at their disposal make them a situational aspect with one free invoke that's nice and I also went for the agitator stunt target on his head. Uh, agitators turn public opinion against their enemies. So long as you're dealing with a known enemy and there are bystanders or witnesses and you haven't totally fucked yourself, <laughs> you're always considered to have a situational aspect that gets one free invoke and one free dilemma. Nice. Uh, yeah. And so uh, what else there? I also took a couple other things that seem like they fit. Let's see, uh, disabling shot, uh, which is basically spending a fate point when you've made a successful attack to apply a situational aspect, like knock out a, an eye or a tooth or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, heel turn, once per session when faced with a compel against one of your aspects, instead of choosing to accept or refuse the complication, you can instead choose to change the aspect. If you do this, you invalidate the compel as if it never happened. Ooh. When he spent fate points returned to the person making the compel. You can never change the aspect back to what it was. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, interesting. sounds fun. Yeah, I like that. Uh, uh, it's it, it's nice. Uh, uh, allows you to be dynamic with your, your character choices there. Um. So one of the things we'll do next time is we'll check in on everybody's skills, see if anybody wants to swap anything around. We'll check in on your aspects. Um, we'll check if anybody wants to, to swap their stunts or uh, take more stunts and reduce your starting refresh if you want. Oh, because stunts are so delicious, you know. Um, well, we'll have a chance to do that. Um, and we'll uh, put a couple of uh, jobs on the table as, as options. We'll probably talk a little bit about how your group has has operated in the past uh, and uh, get a sense of that. Uh, I would like everybody to find a picture and come up with a name for an NPC, like someone that that you go to uh, to to hang out with, someone outside the group that you you trust, something like that. And we'll add them to the images and name sheet for next time. Does that sound okay? Okay. And uh, we will get rolling into jobs right away next time. Uh, typically with a game like this, uh, I do uh, uh, stars and wishes every other session. So once we've got a chance to, to do regular play and things like that, and that'll cover uh, the, that session plus the previous session. So we'll do that at the end of, of next time. Are there any questions? No. Uh, was the uh, yeah. picture, do we need a picture for our character and the NPC? Oh, I'd love you to have a picture of your character too. That'd be great. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I've got a I've got a, a tab with names and images, so you can throw pictures in there and and put names, just so we have uh, some people on the ground. Um, uh, Pinterest is your friend uh, uh, in this case. Um, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be doing this. I'm glad you're all playing this. Fate. I do love fate. I am. I'm one of the few fate advocates on the gauntlet. Um, uh, uh, so I am glad to have a chance to to, to run this, and I, I will encourage you. Uh, uh, the I Hunt book is great. I, I just want to say that flat out. It is a it is a damn good read. Uh, uh, so if you like if you like setting books and materials and lots of stuff, it is it is really solid. So uh, thank you all very much. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>